up in the chilly northern tier of the United States tonight here in Minneapolis at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome because tonight the Ford Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks is on the air. Hi again, everybody. I'm Ken Brew. This is my partner, the now seemingly mythical Mike Galloway. And tonight, Mike, what a lineup. Four-wheel drives, two-wheel drives, and some great monster trucks. We've got a tremendous lineup. There's a tr great group of four-wheel drive trucks. Then we're going to have a wheel-standing shootout. We're going to find out, actually, which one is the best in these wheel standers. And then we're going to get down to that supercharged, crazy racing, get down and get with it monster truck. We've got 10 of them. They'll go under time the first round. They'll bring eight of them back, and then they'll go through a bracket. They'll have one winner tonight, and it's going to be very exciting. Matter of fact, we're right in front of one of those trucks here. This is the AMPM Rocket. Let me ask you about the wheel standers. Now, what's that all about? Well, they're going to set the sled so that they'll wheel standers will pull the wheels up and drag the sled with the wheels up in the air. Now, this is not like the two-wheel drive competition. This is wheel standing competition. One that pulls it the furthest is the winner. That's what it's all about tonight. In other words, wheelies dragging a whole lot of weight down the dirt track tonight. Oh, and it's going to be good. And the best part about it, it's free. The Ford Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Truck and Tractor Pull Championships featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. Hey, for all you do, this Bud's for you. There is the floor of the Metrodome where we are for this. The U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships in the middle of the four-wheel drives. And this is Tom Griffin from Winthrop, Iowa. He's a farmer. He says he's a, a farmer for a hobby, and his real occupation is pulling. That's what he likes to do. He's got a nice two-tone green rig here, a Ford. He's a Ford man, and a big engine, 636. Well, it's the aluminum Ford, 636 cubic inches. He's got to take it out the gate, Ken. Let's see if he can do it. Outside. Yes, sir. Makes it look easy for Tumbleweed out of Iowa. He kind of eased into it, didn't he, Mike? Well, he did. He started off real easy, kind of working into it as he went down the track and then built into the power. The track looks like it's going to hold together pretty good tonight, Ken. Looks like there's going to be a lot of bite to it. And I think that's going to be the key to the whole situation is keeping the ground speed and the momentum up. Here is the Barnstormer. This is Mark Martins out of St. John's, Michigan. The Barnstormer. Actually, it's the Barnstormer 2, 69 GMC. The ninth year of pulling for Mark. His original truck uh, is this one, but he's redone the uh, the back end, and he's redone the front end, and he's redone the cab, so it's really his original truck in spirit only, I suppose. Well, just about like any other pulling vehicle you've ever seen, and that is the simple fact that at one time or another, every piece on it has been redone. I asked him how he got started. He said, well, as a kid, I loved horsepower. He always asked his dad to gun it. Well, he is ranked very, very high this year in the points championship. Having his best season. Nice pull. We can see why he's having his best season as Mark Martins in the Barnstormer 2 is a force to cope with tonight. Nice pull for the Barnstormer 2, the Blue Max. Wally's Blue Max, Wally Harville out of Maple Park, Illinois. Big block Ford for 572 cubic inches. Wally, a longtime campaigner with the United States Hot Rod Association. He can read a track as well as anyone. a lot of changes in Wally's truck since the last time we took a look at it. He's narrowed the front end down. He, he changed the motor up quite a bit. A good job of driving on Wally's part as he was really reaching for the end of it. But Wally unfortunately drew a, a number that's late in the class and as you come into each one of these events you draw a number that's where you go to the starting line. A beautiful job for Wally as he ends up at 166 feet 6 and 3 quarter inches on Wally's Blue Max, the Ford truck, 166, 6 
six and three quarters. How many sixes was that? Three. Thank you. Well, this is the animal. The animal is driven by Len Hunter from Franksville, Wisconsin. 71, Jimmy, 482, under and through the hood. I like this truck, Mike. Well, it's a beautiful truck, and you would. I think it's named after you, Ken. <laughs> Mark to beat 100. Mark Martin has the mark to beat at 191 feet six inches with the Barnstormer. Can anyone beat that distance tonight? It's going to be very difficult as we're looking at a track that has kind of deteriorated. The animal is going to the far right hand side. We've seen people on the left, but he's way over to the right. Let's see if the CPEX will get a hold of the track. Got good ground speed right now. He's on his way. A that, nice piece of driving, Mike. A one nice of, piece of driving. One of the better pulls we've seen this late in the class. That is an excellent job on the animal. Let's watch him, Ken, as he drives it down the track a little ways, easing into it, and all of a sudden, he says it's time. The truck hooks a little bit. And when he does, he just nails the throttle. He's holding back a lot longer than I thought he did. But when he trips him over, he really hooks and hooks hard. Still holding back, and now he's into it. Right on the end of the track. That's a good run. It's a super run. Makes you wonder how he would have done earlier in the night had he gotten a better draw. Well, the animal at 183 and a half of an inch moves into fourth place. We'll be back with more in just a moment from the Metro Dome in Minneapolis. Back at the Metrodome, I'm Ken Brew along with Mike Galloway. Let's go down to the track in the Dusty Rose. This is a super looking truck driven by one of the nicest people in this sport, really. This is Sarah Luckin from Winger, Minnesota. Beautiful 1989 Ford Ranger with a large 620 cubic inch Ford motor. Sarah pulls a lot up in the Canada area. Yes, I know. Travels and with husband Lynn. Well, they've got a, you know, all Fords or Ford fanatics, and I don't blame them. I like Ford. Horsepower time. Let's see if Lincoln and Sarah's combination can put one of them out. Mike, she had it dialed in real good off the start, but it, it looked like it just was a struggle the entire way. What happened? Breaks it, the tires loose real early, Kim. Yeah. See, the tires are broke loose and throws up a lot of dirt. They're just not a whole lot of traction to be found on track side at this time. Motors up, but the ground speed is not there for the simple reason the traction is so weak. Sarah's not real happy. Pretty intense about this uh, pulling. Well, here is what's left after I take Mike Galloway out to dinner. This is small change, Bob Minnick. Winchester, Virginia is home for this 87 El Camino. And by uh, the standards tonight, a real hefty 650 cubic inch engine. He's going to need it tonight. He's there. Boy, he gave it everything he had, too. You know that? Everything he had. Well, the lead is in jeopardy. 191.6 was the lead, and small change may have surpassed that mark. Bob Minnick knocking on the door tonight and unstrapping to uh, perhaps kick it in. Bob Minnick doing a great job showing his, his beautiful driving style as he just works small change down the right-hand side of the track. The gear is right. Everything worked for Bob. The truck is on top. And look, you're going to not see a whole lot of dirt come out of it. He's getting maximum traction out of small chain, and it shows on that finish line as he got so close. 189, one and a half, moves him to third. Let's go back to the pullet track for the Gambler. And this, again, uh, just a superb-looking truck. The Gambler is from Dennis in Iowa. And that's Kevin Fitterson behind the wheel. Boy, there's a sharp, sharp, beautiful Ford truck. Kevin on his way down. You know, this track may have came around right at the end of the track. Kevin bumping on it. Super. The engine smokes at the end, but the Nothing. gambler will take that. Nothing to worry about. 
He had just a good run, Mike, from start to finish. He really did. All the way down, Kevin just doing an excellent job with this truck. And Kevin's been around the sport for quite some time. This is his brand new truck that he's built this year and running it just a few times this winter and done a great job as he really puts one down the track, down to the deep part, down where the money's at, Ken. You gotta be down on the far end of the track to really get in the money, 189, six and a half. And so here's how it shakes down in the 6,200 pound modified class. In third place, Kevin Finneran in the Gambler. Second place to Tom Griffin driving Tumbleweed. And our winner tonight in the Barnstormer two, it's Mark Martin. We're going to break away for a minute, but when we come back, we're going to meet this man, Gary Collins, the force behind the butt boss, when we return here in Minneapolis in just a moment. We're back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. I'm Ken Brew, along with Mike Galloway. It's time for the wheel standing competition. Now, Mike, uh, lead us through this. It's a two-wheel drive. And the first we're going to see is Gary Collins. And it's the one that pulls the sled the furthest with the wheels in the air is the winner. And it's going to be some exciting competition. Sounds simple enough. It is. Exactly. Well, I think by now you know who is behind the wheel of this. If you've been with us on these telecasts this year, you know that the man behind the wheel of the Budweiser Avenger is none other than Gary Collins. El Dorado Springs, Missouri is his home. And this is... Uh, I would say uh, his second pride and joy. We'll see his first in just a little bit, but this Avenger is really something special, Mike. Gary Collins with the uh, beautiful 1988 Ford fiberglass Mustang. And he's a farmer. A farmer? You said his beautiful Ford Mustang. I thought you were going to talk about his beautiful wife, Kim. Kim's here. This is uh, what they're calling a wheel standing shootout. We've got uh, five wheel standers here. And the one that pulls it the furthest on the rear wheels is naturally the winner. Well, and Gary will start things off. Right. Supercharged keep flying. Boy, Gary just cannot get a hold of the track with all the horsepower. For the Budweiser Avenger, it is so tough. We'll have to wait and see if anyone else can get it out tonight. Here he is again. Gary, a bit of a prankster, putting down on his bio sheet tonight that he is 21 years old. He was once. He was about 21 years ago. Gary with the front end up floating down the track and uh, just couldn't get the big tires to hook at all tonight. Sled's heavy. And Gary having a rough time of it. Really rough. But uh, he'll straighten that out when he brings the butt boss in. Yeah, that's that rules. But I'll tell you what, you gotta love this car. It is just super. This is a 1988 Lincoln, 528 cubic inch engine. Lynn Luckin is the driver, and as Luckin would have it, he's with our Mike Galloway down on the track. Mike. Now, Lynn Luckin, not everyone can drive a Lincoln Continental down the street, but you've got one in the pulling vehicle. How did this all come about? Well, we wanted something different and unique, and we figured a Lincoln Continental, Mark, would be just what we wanted, and it was. Now, Lynn, I was in this thing the other day. There's a lot of parts on this Lincoln that still work. They all work. Everything works. It's all functional. It's a metal body come right off a brand-new Lincoln. There's one question I've got to ask you. Did it come with a payment book? No, this one's paid for. Well, it's one of the few, but we'll watch this one tonight and see if it can make some payments and win some cash in a two-wheel drive. Yes, sirree, the hot rod Lincoln. Color is burgundy. And Lynn has one son, two daughters, and a wife that uh, pulls right along with him, Sarah. But tonight, it's Lynn behind the wheel of the hot rod Lincoln. I wonder if he's got the air conditioner blowing cold on it. Think so? He may have. He may. He's probably got the air conditioner blowing cold at Bon Jovi in the cassette machine. Does he sing I've never been this far before? Yes, he does. Let's see how Hot Rod Lincoln does tonight. Waiting for the green flag at the other end of the track. The idea is to pull it farther than anyone else and get those front wheels up in the air. 500 cubic inch forward motor. Lynn Luckett. Come on, Lynn. The door half 
tough way to Racine. Unbelievable. Lynn Luckin has pulled it out the door. With hot Rod Lincoln. Oh, man. You know, he didn't get the front wheels up in the air. But in terms of distance, he did that, it all. That puppy can hunt. He Good struggles the first part of the track. Really struggles, and then somewhere or another it begins to hook. And when it does, the hot rod Lincoln is off like a shot. Front end starts to come up. You see Lynn kind of trying to steer it on the inside, but it's nothing there. Is skyward bound, the hot rod Lincoln right outside the gate for a full pull. Well, here is the man, internationally renowned, Alan Gaines, Jr., and the Orange Blossom Special. Mike, there is no bigger name in this sport. Wait a minute, Alan, you forgot the sled. Oh, he'll go back and get that. Just, just warming up, yeah. I guess. Just making sure everything's all right. Alan Gaines, tobacco farmer from Georgetown, Kentucky, just down the road from Cincinnati. Soon to be a quarter century old. He is 48 years old, 48 years young, really, for Alan. He has made more trips down the track on the rear wheels than most people have made on four wheels. He is the man, but he is also the wheelie king. And it will be real interesting seeing him go down the track now. If you are not attuned to Alan Gaines, he is driving without shoes. He is a, a barefoot driver. And at the end of the run, we'll see Alan get out and brandish his boots Watch him just, to the crowd. He'll stand still, raise the truck in the air, and then take off. Very unique style. There's he the whistle. Is the original. You know, when, when we were in Orlando for our show earlier this year, Alan took his crew out to see the Orange Blossom Special, which is a train that is parked now in the Orlando, Florida area. And like the truck, it's beautiful. It is. He needs to go a full pull. There goes the front end up. And look at this. Truck hasn't moved. Now we're going to take it and run. It's Alan Gaines, the wheelie king, and he's going to defend his title tonight. The little 37 oh. all over the track. Watch this. Look how easy. Oh, let man. Let set down on the track so smooth. That is the man that's done it all. He is the best. Alan Gaines Jr. is out the door, and we will have a pull-off in the two-wheel drive. Look at this. Right up in the air. Now we're going to go for it. Now that we've got it up there, we'll take it and run with it. As Allen has done so many times. Watch this. He drifts right here, and he just fights it back, doesn't he? Oh, he does. Again, he's got brakes on the back that pulls it back around. And he'd love for it to go left right about now. He hits the brakes again, brings it around. And the Wheelie King, internationally known, is defending his title here tonight. Well, Mama, you're going to drive me to drink it if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Unless you're Lynn Luckin, of course, who had a full pull to begin with tonight and now goes into the pull-off against Alan Gaines, the hot rod Lincoln, Mike. We talked to Lynn Luckin earlier tonight. He told us he felt good about his car, and he sure did because he drove it out the door. But it's a pretty car, and it's uh, got to be one of the most unique vehicles that anyone has ever seen in a two-wheel drive. But can he beat the Wheelie King? We'll know in a moment. Important to point out that the sled has been reweighted. Important to point out that the sled, uh, the gears on it have been readjusted so that that box will come up a lot quicker now than what it did the first time down the track. I don't think we're going to see a full pull now, but we'll see. Here is the hot rod Lincoln. He's trying. Well, that was a good pass for yeah. Hot Rod Lincoln. He's down deep, means that Alan Gaines needs to study his lesson. Now, Mike, that they have reweighted or readjusted the gear on that sled, will that now mean that uh, these guys will approach it any differently? Will I think they, they will. readjust? I, think he, yeah, I really think so. I think you're going to see Alan, when he raises it up this time, going to nail it. He'll nail it. And we will see Alan Gaines 
run down the track and go after the hot rod Lincoln. Allen's climbing into the cab, and we're climbing into the commercial part of our broadcast. We'll be back in Minneapolis in just a second. We're back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. I'm Ken Brew along with Mike Galloway. The Hot Rod Lincoln has already had his kick at the curb, 176 feet and six inches. And that is exactly what Alan Gaines was equal or better to win the pull-off. Alan Gaines went out the door like the Hot Rod Lincoln in the first pull tonight. And now he tees himself up for what could be one whale of a win. Mike Galloway seems to think that once the nose is up in the air on this, that Alan Gaines will waste little time and just nail it. Going to be yesterday's news. This is the man. Alan Gaines waiting for the green flag, and he's got it. The front end will go up in the air first, and then Alan Gaines will lower that right foot on the accelerator and take this baby right out the door. Up the truck comes, and down the pedal goes. Uh-oh, he's having a hard time. Now he got a hold of it. Now the truck is hooked. It's a rocket. It's a rocket to the door. He's got it. Gaines is on his way. Pole. He's out of here. He's done it. He's won it. Alan Gaines has smoked them tonight. Once again, defending his title as the Wheelie King. He is the man. Alan Gaines out the cab, sands the boots, and the win. That was a drive and a half. In trouble, the truck straggled early. It finally found a place to run, and when it did, it looked like a rocket. And Alan checking everything over. I was saying we'll check that out for next time, but he's got first prize money tonight. Looking at and it. as you said, Mike, he basically only had half a track to work with yeah. tonight because he struggled for the first half of this pull. Front end comes up, tires break loose, but they there's no ground speed with him, Ken. None whatsoever. Just all he can do, actually, is to, to go anywhere. But you see him hunting a place to run. Right there, seems like the truck took off just like it was on solid ground, rocketing right straight up in the air and down the track for a full pull for Alan Gaines gently luring the Orange Blossom Special back to earth. Well, Mike Galloway, this is about as awesome a machine as you're going to find in a truck pull. This is the Bud Boss, the new and improved Bud Boss. Gary Collins, a couple of years ago, went back to the garage in El Dorado Springs and said, i got to come up with something just a little bit bigger and a little bit better, and he did. He came up with his 3,000 horsepower, two 540 Keith Black Hemis, a value of in excess of $100,000, and where do you see this thing run? Unbelievable. Aero Max, 9,000 Ford Heavy Truck. What? The Bud Boss cooking. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, the sled driver was hanging out for all of his life, too. Oh, boy. Did he make the turn as he headed to the tunnel? Gary Collins and Ken, no doubt a full pull, but I hope we can see this on replay. You're going to see something truly amazing. It looked like watch, he had a plane to catch. Watch Gary Collins. If you could see the flags on the back of his truck. He leaves with the sled. Boy, he is on his way and really hooked up. It's flying. Look at the flags. They turned around backwards. That is the aerodynamics. The flags are actually what should be flying the other direction. But see how they're, they're sticking out there. Well, the wind coming over the uh, top of it turns the flags around. That just goes to show you how aerodynamic that is. Look at the flags going the wrong direction. There is the Budweiser boss, Gary Collins. We'll have more here from the Metro Dome in Minneapolis, but before we break away, let's take a look and see who's doing what in the points championship race. Ken Brew along with Mike Galloway and Mike we're ready to go here with the battle of the monster trucks we've got 10 tonight and what's the format well they're staging them both on concrete so it's going to be quite an exciting race 
You go down the, uh, the track, make a U-turn, and over the cars. The finish line, as we mentioned, is the uh, area on the last car. The last car is the finish line, so uh, that's going to be the point to look at. The eighth fastest will come back to run again. The two slowest will go home. So this is qualifying, but they're only going to qualify eight out of the ten. Brett Barrett. Schaefer on this side, Jim Kramer on the other side. Schaefer out of the hole, and what a shot. And it's going to be tough. They're going to have to move some trucks. Watch out, they're together. Oh, man. They bumped. Bigfoot and Barefoot have bumped into turns, and this is in qualifying only. Now, their problem is there's a little bit of dust on it. There's dust on the track, and Bigfoot went into the slide. They were both sliding, and they came together. Look at the tire. Look at the right, left front tire on Bigfoot. It is absolutely mashed. The Bigfoot truck came out on the worst end of it as he shut it down right there. It's got a severely bent wheel. Mike, also, that was one thing, but the turn back where the other monster trucks are is awfully tight. In fact, Schaefer almost took out some monster trucks that are just sitting there waiting to go. Well, I believe they may want to uh, revamp this situation a little bit. May want to move some trucks. Bigfoot, now I don't know what they were going to do on it. Bigfoot goes ahead and crosses the finish line, but here's the deal, Ken. The two slowest trucks go home. The Probably, yeah, just a, a safety precaution in case someone doesn't finish or breaks down, but certainly not the kind of start Bigfoot needed tonight. Well, in qualifying, look at Fred Schaefer. It's a tight turn. The tires are really turned. But see the dust, and he's sliding. He's sliding around. Now, you're going to notice Bigfoot coming over on the side, and he also is in a tremendous slide. I don't know what, but they hit. Oh. Boy, and I mean they hit hard. I don't know what on the, uh, the barefoot truck that Bigfoot hit, but it sure bent the left front wheel on the truck. Fred Schaefer goes ahead and crosses the finish line. But surely took a real hard beating on that. So that's going to be something we're going to have to uh, kind of keep in touch with is the two slowest will not qualify and will go on the trailer. Now this round will feature the Scold Bandit and the AMPM boss. Gary, well, there's the AMPM rocket. Jim Reese doing the driving. Yep. Jim Reese from... Santa Inez, California, 72 Chevy pickup. Matter of fact, Mike Galloway had a chance to talk with him just a little while ago. Thanks, Ken. Well, I'm with Jim Reese. And Jim Reese, last time we saw you with this truck, you beat Bigfoot in the finals out in Anaheim. But, boy, you really hurt the truck. It looked like it destroyed it. How bad was it? Well, it was pretty bad, uh, Mike. We had to replace the entire frame. We bent it up pretty good. But she's back now, and she's a lot better than she was, actually. Well, Jim, are you after Bigfoot tonight and then be able to drive off? Would that be kind of like an ultimate challenge? Yeah, I think so. You know, we're, we're doing real good. We've, we've only faced him once, and we did real good. We had a little problem, but I think we're going to come back on top again today. Tell us a little bit about the AMPM rocket. Well, the rocket uh, is a 72 Chevy, and it, it has a big motor, 540, fuel-injected, uh, 871 supercharger, and uh, kind of a new suspension idea that we came up with, and... Uh, it's working real good. It's a real competitive truck. Jim Reese is one of the quality monster truck builders in America. And on top of that, he's one of the better monster truck drivers. We're going to see how he does tonight in the AMBM Rocket. Jim Reese has a brand new baby at home, three months old. And uh, Gary doing the driving of the Skull Bandit. Gary Starton. Sardin, excuse me, Gary Sardin. Both of them supercharged big block Chevrolet's art car turbo 400 transmission, and they're tough. They're I, very I, tough. Ironically, both from the same hometown in California. Well, the trucks are owned by the same man. Seth Dolton out in California owns both of these trucks. So Seth can't lose on this Seth one. can't lose on this one. He's qualifying. They're side by side, hard running action, but they're gear, both of them on the buyers, keeping them in bound, keeping them slowed down a little bit. Not charging real hard, but look at the jump. Look at that Skull Bandit oh, truck. That Skull Bandit wins that heat. Beautiful jump. Both of those trucks were just perfect. And what's it going to take to get that Bigfoot card? I want the Bigfoot card. You can't have the Bigfoot card. I it's you, my Bigfoot card. I'll tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you Bigfoot Fast Tracks, Master of Disaster, 
and heart. Nope, 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 nope. It's my Bigfoot card. I want to hold on to the Bigfoot card. Come on, Ken. I'll give you I'll give you three for one. You got Goliath? Yeah, I got Goliath. You want Goliath for that one? You got Outlaw 35? I got Outlaw 35 in here, but I don't want that. I want that you Bigfoot card. You got Carolina card. Crusher? No. You don't have Carolina Crusher? I don't have the Carolina Crusher. Would you like the Carolina Crusher? Yeah, but what am I going to have to give you for it? Bigfoot Fast Tracks. All right, I'll do that. We have the Bigfoot Fast Tracks. Okay. All right, that's fair. Now, what do you want for me? I want... I want the Bigfoot truck. Bigfoot? Yeah. Okay, you can have Bigfoot. Okay, what do I have to... $100. No way! I just got these cards. Well, I just got my cards, too, but I got Bigfoot and you didn't. Do well, you know why? Why? I know Bob Chandler. Well, you must know him better than I do. Bigfoot trading card, and I don't have Bigfoot. What we're talking about here are the official trading cards of the Monster Truck Racing Association. It's a an association out of St. Louis, and they now have trading cards out for virtually every monster truck. And there, there's got to be, what, about 200 of these things? Oh, at least. They have Bigfoot, and they have Goliath, and they have the Mopar Magic and the Black, Black Stallion. Stallion. I mean, all the big monster trucks that you see when you go to the truck pulls all around the country, well, now they're out in trading cards. And I guess, Mike, they'll be on sale at uh, a number of these events. Well, evidently. Now, back to that uh, Bigfoot card. You can't have it. There is absolutely no way I will give you the Bigfoot card. No. Oh, all right. Okay. There. Thanks. I'm happy. <laughs> no, you're dopey. I'm happy. Ken Brew with Mike Galloway, the Ford Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships. Brought to you in part by Goodyear Wrangler. You either own Wranglers or you need them. Well, here's a good way to settle a difference, and there was a difference when Barefoot and Bigfoot went at each other. Bigfoot and Barefoot kissed on the far turn. Bigfoot knocked for a loop, so they're going to do it again, Mike. They, they went the first time. It didn't really count, except in the minds of Fred Schaefer and Jim Kramer. Now, there's Fred sitting down on the line, and uh, what a tag. But uh, Kramer is lined up. Let's see if Fred comes to attention they will give both of them a rerun Fred of course uh, there's bare Bigfoot barefoot has those tires that we saw earlier this year which are lighter thinner racing tires and you would think against the clock there is a, a great shot of the tires you would think a great against the clock it would give the advantage to uh, barefoot if he can get the traction on this pavement and that is the key to it Bigfoot going to make a buy. Let's see how he does. He's in the turn hard. Nails the throttle, picking the left front tire up, and he spins out. Turns it back around. Uh-oh, he's in a little trouble. Trying to drive out of it, he does. Beautiful job of driving by Jim Kramer, but he was in trouble when he made the turn, and uh, there's liquid coming out of the front of it. Let's take a look at Bigfoot's run. Boy, Jim Kramer is really having a tough night. He's in it. See, he's trying to pick the right front tire up. Gassing it, cutting it hard, picking that right front tire up. But watch it come on around. Comes on around. Kramer sees it's happening. Cuts the tires back the other way. Then on the throttle, only halfway hitting the cars. Throws the truck over to the side. Here is the professionalism of Jim Kramer staying on the throttle. He's had it happen 100 times before and drives it right out of it. Then it's in trouble again. He gets it shut down. Everything comes out in fine style. And there's the gentleman that has really had some tough luck tonight. And to keep rivals separate, they're going to let Barefoot run on his own just like Bigfoot. There you go, Ken. Now, let's see how it works out. Boy, Jim Kramer had a tough break. Fred Schaefer not letting anything grow under his feet. Let's see if he can negotiate the turn. Good turn. And he does. He does an excellent style. He's lined up. He's, a jump. He's in trouble. He's off to the side. He drives it out of it. And... Yeah, just knock that start and finish line over. Well, we're going to have to get with some officials, get some uh, ideas. And, and we can see on the, the, that would be the right rear tire of Fred Schaefer's truck that is really bent in the side of it. That, that was in the accident that happened earlier. There you see it. Uh, yeah, you can just see. Just a real hard bend. He had a lot of speed right off the starting line. He makes a real good turn right here. Real good. On the throttle hard, brings it around, but he can't, the truck won't correct fast enough. And look at him when he gets to the cars. He's off, way off to the left, hits the cars. The truck is uh, in, in tough shape, as you might say. The right 
front tires are off the car, the left front on, and he wiped <laughs> out the other yeah. standing pillar. Now, the, uh, the pairings will be coming up in just a moment as there is Ken Donay and Fred and Jim Kramer and the rest of the monster truck drivers gathering together to make pairing. Well, we'll see how it shakes down. We'll be back to find out who's in the big show and who's got to go home when we return in just a second. Back at the Metrodome, I'm Ken Pro. Mike Galloway is next to me, and uh, this is like old home week now because for the third time tonight, Barefoot and Bigfoot will square off. They did it once, had a little bit of an accident, then did it individually to get the time. Both have qualified, and now again, side by side, we've got Fred Schaefer and Jim Kramer. There is Barefoot to the lower part of your screen, and Bigfoot is at the top of your screen. There is Fred Schaefer who will drive barefoot. And Mike, uh, I don't know what to expect now except just all out, you know, nobody is going to lay back now. Anything goes, Ken. This certainly not when they race against each other here. No way. You've got to just go for it. And they're off. Fred Schaefer, a little bit of a lead, but watch the turn. That's the important part of it. Schaefer cutting it tight. Kramer's got it tight. Can they, they keep oh. them apart? So close. It's down to the finish line area. Let's watch the jump. It's going to be foul. But I believe Schaefer's in trouble. He pulls it out. What a driving style by Fred Schaefer. He had that truck in trouble and drove it out of it. Schaefer's in good shape right here as he's got it turned. But look how close they get. They may not be that close from another viewpoint, but our viewpoint, the tires were so close. Now, Bigfoot's got a little bit of a lead on him going to it right there. Schaefer's in trouble. Kramer down on the cars first. That is the, uh, the finish line is the last car. But here's where Fred's in trouble. Gets it on its side, cuts it, stays on the throttle and drives it out of it. We now move on to round two, the AMPM rocket against what used to be known as Big Toe, which is now Evil Force. You got to think Jim Reese may be a favorite on this one. Jim Reese, we saw out in Anaheim go to the final round and win against Bigfoot in the final round, but crashing on the last round. Reese. You know, he's a builder of monster trucks. He's built about nine of these things. And I'd say one of the premier young builders in America, building for Golden State out in California. He's got it covered out of the hole. Let's see how Reese handles it. This track is so slick. No matter how good you are, you can be in trouble in just the blink of an eye. Reese has got a good lead over it. Will he go ahead and drive out? And he does. Takes his time. Wins that one handily. Saving the truck. I think that was a wise move on his part. You notice, Kenny he was backing out of the truck. He looked over, saw he had a lead and held the lead and held it well, so he will progress on to round two. The AMPM Rocket, the winner, and will now move on. And Evil Force will depart. This should be a great race coming up next. We've got Heartbeat against the Master of Disaster. Either one of these trucks are capable of winning. Both of them great drivers, both of them big horsepower. If you have to look at horsepower, you've got to look at heartbeat. Probably got a little bit bigger motor in it. Probably pounding out a little bit more horsepower. The driving style is good over there, but the gentleman here in this master of disasters is one of those guys that never, ever says die. Doug is a handler when it gets down to racing. And now, the master of disaster, Doug Spain here from Albany, Minnesota. I think Doug's got a, may have a little bit of advantage on this race. You know, besides the horsepower, I'm going to have to get that to heartbeat. But the little short wheelbase truck, that could be a big advantage on this tight turn down at the end. Heartbeat out of the lead. He's caught him sleeping on the line. Can he keep it up? Uh oh, he's in trouble. It's skating on the back. Skating on the back, but he's, he's all right. He works it out. He's got it. Got it. Oh, man. He's got it. Heartbeat wipes out one of them. Oh. On the other side. And master of disaster, a lot of smoke coming out of the back of that truck. But it's Heartbeat that will move on. Just a superb run by Heartbeat. On the replay, Mike, we'll see Heartbeat made the turn wide. He's at the top of the screen. Well, the back end of it's trying to come right. around on him, but Brett doing a beautiful job of driving, cutting the tires the other way and making his straight right out. Now he comes back around, nails the throttle, a lot of air for Heartbeat, lands up on two wheels it is wild and woolly racing here tonight you see the master disaster a lot of smoke coming out from the transmission area on that truck he may have very well smoked the transmission 
for the master of disaster. But the heartbeat will move on. My heavens, who are you going to pick on a winner on this one? There's the beautiful Skull Bandit truck. That's another one of the Jim Reese built trucks. Gary doing the driving. Gary made one of the prettiest qualifying runs that we've seen tonight with this truck earlier. But you've got can't count, count out Rob Hughes out of Woodstock, Illinois. He's got first blood. And this truck is so tough, and so is Rob. This is going to be one of the best races of the night right here. I think this could be really the race. We might see the winner come out of this set of uh, trucks right here because both of these guys are truly capable of winning. Well, I'd call it a dead heat going into the first turn. The bandit truck taking his time. First blood a little bit of a lead. Can he hold up with it? First blood's got a lead. Look out. Oh! Oh! His... Whoa! The Skull Bandit made up all of his time as he leaped the cars. Mike, we'll see it in the replay. The Skull Bandit had so much air coming over those cars. Now they're lined up. First Blood's got a lead on him of about a truck right here. Half a truck. He's in the air, but now air is going. Can't tell from my vantage point. We'll have to wait. It might be. You know, I thought the Skull Bandit won it, but First Blood touched wheels down first I, after after uh, leaping the cars where the Skull Bandit was still in the air, so it might be that First Blood did indeed win that heat. There is a nice shot in the red jumpsuit, taking the helmet off, Rob Fuchs, getting the congratulatory handshake. It is First Blood who has moved on. And so now the semifinals are set. Well, I have them set with Bigfoot versus the, versus the AMPM Rocket, and I have Heartbeat up against First Blood. And we'll see the semifinals when we continue here from the Metrodome in just a moment. So stay tuned. It's time for the semifinals, and Bigfoot will draw the AMPM Rocket. There is the Rocket. The Rocket will be at the top part of your screen. At the bottom part will be the uh, Bigfoot. And, uh, Mike, they have seen each other once before. We can go back so many months, almost a year ago, when the two of them met in Anaheim in a competition similar to this. The Rocket came out the winner on that one, but crashed on the final jump. So this is a rematch of the final round of competition. There's Jim Kramer watching the flagman. On go. Who will it be? The Ford has got a little bit of a lead. He's got the throttle hard. Can he... Can he bring it around? Can he bring it around? What's going to happen? Oh, watch it. The Rocket is in a little bit of a lead. Jim Kramer makes it all up. Oh. But he, oh, the left front took the beating on that. The left front tire must have moved six to eight inches when he landed. Look at I it. think he's wiped the left front out on it. I think the left front is wiped completely out on Bigfoot. And there goes the tire down. And in an ironic twist, it was the AMPM Rocket that won that match in Anaheim, but could not continue because of a wreck. Exactly. Now it is Bigfoot who has won the match, but will not be able to continue because of the wreck. Don't count these guys out. He's they gonna may have, have a whole cart. He may, he's going to have to do some heavy-duty repair work, and I mean in minutes. Unbelievable. And that probably happened as the truck landed, it, Mike. It did. You can see the left front tire really take a beating because it lands with that tire down. Now, they, they're drifting so close. The rocket in the lead, but both of them have let off. They don't want to hurt each other. Don't want to hurt the truck. Now, back on the throttle. Reese is trying to correct. Watch this left front tire. It was injured earlier from the incident with Fred Schaefer. There. Oh. See, the body comes down on the tire. Everything, the whole force of the truck, the momentum and everything lands on that left front. It just wouldn't take it. To the top of your screen, heartbeat. At the bottom of your screen, that's first blood, each awaiting the green flag. Each of them super competitors. Can't pick a winner in this. It's just too close. Here we go. Rob out with a little bit of a lead as they go early. Rob has got a good lead. First blood with quite a lead over heartbeat. Brett has got problems. The heartbeat truck quit. The heartbeat truck shut down. So it's first blood first continuing. Blood. First blood to the finals. First blood to the finals when the heartbeat was lost. Mike, a discussion there uh, just off the track. Jim Kramer apparently had thoughts about uh, trying to fix the truck as quickly as possible or at least get it to a point where it could compete. But it looks like uh, he's going to call it a night. I think the truck's injured severely. 
Yeah, I think he's got damage to a wheel. He's busted a shock on it. Uh, also, I saw some fluid leaking out of the radiator area. So I think uh, I think Kramer will probably put it to a halt. Look at that. Now, there's our very gracious gentleman. You know, it, it's, you know, been everything. Tough, it's been a tough night, too. He had the kiss with uh, Barefoot that did some damage to his truck, and uh, he had a trouble coming off the cars a couple of times, and now this still has time for an autograph, though. Well, just goes to show what kind of class Jim Kramer has. Well, this is what they call the final act. This is the grand finale. Top eliminator. Top of the heat, Jack. It's First Blood, who has come on from a big win over Heartbeat and the Skull Bandit to take on the AMPM Rocket. Not the winner in the last set. That distinction went to Bigfoot. Bigfoot cannot answer the bell, so it's the Rocket. And it's Blood out of the hole with a good hole shot. Rob Hughes wants this one. Jim Reese has got other ideas. Uh-oh, uh-oh! Oh, my, my heavens, Reese just could not bring it around. Reese had that one in the bag, but the dust, it's Rob Hughes winning it with first blood. Reese will come back kind of anticlimactic at the finish, but Reese found the problem that's been seen several times here tonight, and that is the dust on the floor, but there is the man of the hour. Your winner tonight, your top eliminator, is first blood. Mike, on the replay, I think we'll see that... Uh, and they're no doubt happy. Yeah, Fuchs, watch, watch uh, the AMP of Rocket. He kind of backs off, and Fuchs takes advantage of it. Well, Reese is in trouble. He knows he's out of bounds. He hits, you know, he hits the brakes and gets it stopped. Uh, Rob staying away from the Rocket, both of them doing a great job of keeping the truck out of trouble as of such, not to hurt them, and goes on for a, a good, easy win. But this young gentleman deserves it. He's really been out working hard, and he's a fine driver. He's got a fine monster truck, and he gets congratulations, and they're well-deserved. The winner tonight is First Blood. First, one second's count. Well, the story is written now for the Metrodome. First Blood is the winner. And the Ford Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks has been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Now speaking for my partner, Mike Galloway, and our producer, Mike Carbon. this is Ken Brew, reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud.